Hello viewers, uh, we will continue the study of uh, the topological properties of the complex plane. Okay. So, so far uh, we have seen uh, uh, until what limit points are okay, uh, and what interior points, boundary points and uh, exterior points are. Okay. So, uh, today uh, we will start with uh, compact sets. Okay. So, firstly uh, a bounded set. Okay. So, a set uh, S contained in C okay, is said to be bounded if uh, there is an M positive such that the modulus of Z is strictly less than M for every Z belongs to. S. Okay. So, uh, what that means is um, a bounded set basically means that uh, the modulus of z which is the distance of the point z from the origin okay, uh, is bounded okay, for every z belongs to S by the same number m. Okay. So, uh, if, you, if you draw a circle of radius m Okay, around the origin, okay, then every uh, element of S is contained uh, within uh, this uh, circle of radius m. Okay, and so, uh, that is a bounded set. So, intuitively it fits uh, the, the picture that uh, you know the, the points of uh, S are contained in this large circle. Okay, so, so that is the definition of a bounded set. We will see that the property of boundedness together with uh, closedness or uh, the property of a set being closed uh, in the complex plane uh, play an important role uh, many times in complex analysis. Okay. So, you will recall from uh, the calculus of functions of one real variable that uh, you had the extreme value theorem, uh, where uh, a function uh, on a uh, closed and bounded interval uh, assumed uh, its maximum value or minimum value uh, on a closed and bounded interval. Okay. So, uh, such properties are exhibited uh, by closed and bounded intervals and functions on closed and bounded intervals uh, in uh, real analysis. Okay. So, an equivalent concept here is that of uh, uh, closed and bounded sets in the complex plane, uh, which we are going to call uh, compact. Okay. So, we are going to call, uh, we will call closed and uh, bounded sets, okay, subsets of C as compact sets, as uh, compact sets. Okay. So, that is not a definition, we are going to give a definition now, uh, but firstly um, compact sets uh, play the role of closed bounded intervals uh, in real analysis. Okay. So, uh, 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 these sets are to complex analysis, what closed bounded intervals are to uh, real analysis or uh, functions of one real variable. Okay. And uh, so, firstly I want to uh, define compact sets. We will call these kind of sets as compact sets, but I do not really define. Uh, it is defined in terms of uh, open sets, uh, so that it fits a more general setting uh, of an arbitrary topological space. That is not our point of discussion here, uh, but we will give the definition and we will show that it is e or we will uh, uh, state a theorem, which says that uh, it is equivalent to this statement here. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, an open covering. Okay. So, uh, let S be a subset of C, let S be a subset of C, uh, could be empty does not matter. Okay. Uh, an open covering okay, of S is a collection of open sets.
let us call it script G. So, the elements of G are uh, open sets and G is a collection, script G is a collection okay? and it is a collection of open sets such that uh, the union of G, G belongs to the script G, okay? uh, it contains S. Okay, so whose union uh, contains uh, S. Okay, such is an open covering. So it's essentially uh, open sets which cover really the set S. So uh, now we'll define uh, a compact set. Okay, so uh, a set S contained in C. Okay, is said to be compact. if every what is important is if every open covering of S okay, has a finite sub cover. Okay. So, a sub cover is a sub collection of this collection of open sets. Okay. So, if, if there is a finite collection uh, finite sub collection of this collection of open sets, uh, which is enough to cover the set S, okay, then we say that the set is compact. Okay. And this property should be exhibited to uh, exhibited uh, for every open covering that you can bring for uh, this set S. Okay. And in that case, we call the set uh, a compact. Okay. So, um, that is uh, the definition. Okay. And you will see I mean uh, an example or a non example will actually help us uh, see that such a phenomenon is not exhibited by every subset of the complex plane. Okay. An easy example is B 0 1 okay, the unit disk in the complex plane. Okay. So, what you can do is you can uh, form the union of. So, first let me uh, define a collection of open sets. Okay. This is B 0 R such that R belongs to uh, 0 1. Okay. This is the e, uh, interval 0 1. Okay. So, this, this is uh, interval contained in R contained in the real numbers. Okay. So, uh, uh, this sorry I can sorry I think. So, this is 0 the, the interval closed at 0 and open at 1. Okay. And the union of uh, actually that does not matter whether I close it at 0 or not, uh, the union of B uh, 0 R, okay, uh, R belongs to this 0 1, okay, uh, is uh, this will definitely contain all of uh, the ball 0 1. Okay. So, what I have done is I have that is this is the following is the picture here is the unit disk okay. and this collection of open sets here is essentially um, a set of disks which are growing in size you can think of them as growing in size okay. and they will have radi radii uh, okay. uh, so it is the inside here. Okay. So, they will have radii in the interval uh, 0 comma 1. Okay. So, so, as the radius grows, okay, so these, these, this collection of open sets tend to cover uh, the whole uh, ball uh, of radius 1 centered at 0. Okay. But unfortunately, there is no finite no sub collection of this collection, which will actually uh, uh, cover all of uh, B 0 1. Okay. Uh, notice that B 0 1 itself is not included here. Okay. So, this uh, B 0 1 does not belong to okay, this does not belong to uh, the collection G, because 1 is excluded from this. That is an example where we cannot uh, have a finite sub collection, uh, which will contain uh, the whole set S. So, in this case the set S under consideration is this uh, B 0 1. Okay. Yet another um, yet another example or a non example of a compact set is um, 
uh, the set of natural numbers or the integers contained in. Uh, so, let us take uh, the set of all uh, n plus i times 0 such that n belongs to n okay, contained in C. Okay. So, these are of course, uh, points on the real line okay, which uh, stand for the uh, natural numbers. Okay. So, you can consider the collection G okay, of uh, B 0 uh, k let us say n okay, such that n belongs to n. Okay. So, uh, each of these uh, in turn okay, so starting with B 0 2 okay, starting with B 0 2 is going to contain uh, one additional natural number than the previous B 0 n minus 1. Okay. So, B 0 n uh, will contain one more uh, natural number than B 0 n minus 1, but all in all you can never have a sub collection of this uh, which will cover all the uh, natural numbers okay, all the set s solely because uh, if you take a sub collection or um, uh, or a finite sub collection even worse okay, uh, then uh, I should not say just a sub collection, but uh, I should say a finite sub collection. Okay. If you take a finite sub collection then you will have to stop at a point and beyond that point there will still be a natural number which will not uh, fall in here. Okay. So, I apologize I, I should say a finite sub collection in this ex, in this non example also uh, there is no finite sub collection of G which will actually uh, span all of B 0 1. Okay. You can always get a sub collection that is not the point. Okay. So, uh, there is no finite sub collection. Okay. So, these are two examples of sets which are not compact okay. and then what are examples of uh, sets which are compact. Well, um, if you I mean uh, we will give a theorem okay, we are not going to prove this, this is the Heine Borel theorem which will give us many examples of uh, uh, of compact sets. Okay. So, uh, a set S contained in C okay, uh, is compact if and only if it is closed and bounded in C. Okay, so, we will skip the proof of uh, this theorem, okay, but uh, we will use its conclusion uh, to give examples of uh, compact sets. Okay. So, examples of compact sets the, the unit circle circle in C is compact. Okay, it is closed uh, and it is bounded, it is closed because the complement of it is the unit disk uh, without its boundary and everything outside the closed unit disk okay. and we saw that both those sets are open sets. Okay. So, this set is closed okay. and also it is bounded well the modulus of any number on the unit circle is 1. Okay. So, uh, it is bounded definitely. Okay. So, this is a uh, closed and bounded set and hence it is compact. Okay. So, in general you can take I um, will give a pictorial example too. Okay. You can take any uh, uh, any box like that okay, and consider the set of points inside that box. Okay. Uh, okay. This, this is uh, a curve of some sort you can I mean if you do not like this you can take some polygon okay, and then consider the box obtained uh, by taking the points inside and maybe even uh, points well uh, points inside and on the uh, polygon. Okay. So, this set is compact because it is because it is closed and it is also bounded. Okay. There is uh, no reason why this, this uh, box should be symmetric. Okay. Um, uh, it could be uh, asymmetric, it should it could be placed uh, completely in the first quadrant for example, or it could be uh, it could be a little skew, okay. but uh, nevertheless it is going to be a bounded set, because it is a box 
okay, and uh, uh, and it's closed definitely because you, we are including the points on the boundary and uh, uh, and so uh, we are including all its limit points in addition to the interior points. Okay, so such a set is compact. Okay, and uh, some properties of a compact set. We are going to see that these compact set are sets are going to play an important role in uh, complex analysis. Okay, and uh, here are some properties. Uh, uh, well, I'll give uh, at least one important property. Okay, so. Here is a Cantor's theorem. Okay, so let uh, let KJ's okay be compact subsets of the complex plane. Okay, with okay, so this KJ's uh, J belongs to N. Okay. So, with uh, k 1 containing k 2, okay, containing k 3 etcetera. Okay. So, it is a nested uh, uh, sequence of compact sets like that, okay. uh, then the intersection of uh, k j, okay, uh, j equals 1 through infinity okay, uh, is non empty. Okay, if you take the intersection of all these nested uh, sequence of compact sets, uh, then it has to be uh, non-empty. Okay, we'll see why. A proof. Uh, well, uh, K one. Okay, so what we can do is suppose it is empty. Okay, suppose this intersection is empty. Okay. So, uh, if the intersection is empty, then uh, the complement of the intersection uh, is all of the complex plane. Okay. So, what we can do is, uh, we can consider the complements of each of these compact sets. A compact set is closed, okay. so its complement is going to be open. Okay. And so, you can, uh, what you can do is, uh, if you consider uh, this collection G, Okay, of the complements of cages, the complement in the complex plane of these cages, okay, such that j belongs to n. Okay, then uh, you know that the whole of the complex plane is actually covered by um, this kj complement j equals one through infinity. Why? Because of course uh, the intersection of all these is empty. Okay, so the the complements when you take the union of all of them, uh, then you are going to get the whole of the complex plane. Okay. In particular k 1, since this is the whole complex plane, k 1 is definitely covered by g, g is an open covering for k, k 1. Okay. So, uh, k 1 is contained in the union of j equals 1 through infinity k j complement. Okay. And here is where we are, uh, here is one instance where we are going to use um, the particular definition of compact sets that we have given that every open covering will have a finite sub cover. Okay. So, uh, so there is since k 1 is compact, okay, uh, there are uh, uh, okay, there are numbers j 1, j 2, so on until j n let us say okay, such that. So, there are finitely many uh, indices such that uh, the union of j equals 1 through uh, I should say m equals 1 through n of k j subscript m complement is going to contain uh, is going to contain k 1. I apologize this is k 1 uh, is contained in 
this is the whole complex plane. So, k 1 is contained in the union of this. Okay. So, k 1 is contained uh, in here. Okay. So, when, since k 1 is contained in here, uh, these are finitely many okay. and uh, th by this condition here that these are nested like this k 1 contains k 2 contains k 3 etcetera. The union of all of these will be contained in uh, k j n plus 1 complement. Okay. So, here I am actually assuming uh, more. Okay. So, I will say that j 1 is less than j 2 is less than so on until j n such that. Okay. So, I mean when there are finitely many integers I can of course, order them finitely many uh, natural numbers I can order them. So, I will without loss of generality assume that j 1 is less than j 2 is less than etcetera until j n. So, j n is the largest integer okay. and so k j n complement uh, the, the union of all of these uh, m equals 1 through n uh, k j, uh, j m complement is going to be contained in k j n plus 1 complement because the union of m equals or, or k j n plus 1. Okay, is contained in k j n is contained in etcetera uh, contained in uh, k j 1 if you wish. Okay. So, since this is true uh, the union of the, the complements of all of these okay, will definitely be contained in the complement of this uh, k j n plus 1. Okay. And so, uh, so, this tells you that uh, k 1 is contained in the complement of uh, k j n plus 1, uh, which implies that k 1 intersection k j n plus 1, whatever that index is, is empty. Okay. But this is a nested set, any point in k j n uh, which occurs further down okay, has to be contained in k 1. So, this is a contradiction. Okay. So, this contradicts uh, the given hypothesis and so, uh, the intersection has to be non empty. Okay. So, uh, the intersection of k j j equals 1 through infinity uh, has to be non empty. Okay. So, that is one property of uh, compact sets. Okay. And uh, yet another uh, proposition is as follows here is another property which we might have some use for okay so uh, a closed subset this the proof of this is very clear the a closed subset of a compact set is compact okay any subset of a compact set is bounded okay because the whole set itself is bounded Okay. So, if you have a closed subset of a compact set, uh, then uh, you have a bounded set and then it is also closed uh, by hypothesis. So, it is compact. Okay. So, the proof is just directly there in the statement. Okay. So, uh, that is another property which we might have some use for. Okay. So, uh, then uh, uh, we will see the concept of uh, connectedness. Okay. So, this is a, a different uh, property and uh, we will have a use of this property as well uh, from time to time. Okay. So, uh, connectedness. So, uh, like compactness connectedness is also defined in terms of uh, open uh, subsets uh, of the complex plane. So, a set S contained in C okay, is said to be connected okay, uh, if it cannot be expressed okay, or if it is not contained okay, not contained in the uh, union of two disjoint 
non empty open uh, subsets of C okay uh, which have a non trivial intersection with S. Okay. So, uh, I mean that is a mouthful let me explain. Okay. So, if there are if you can never write S uh, to be contained okay, in uh, G 1 union G 2, where G 1 is non empty G 2 is non empty okay, and G 1 intersection G 2 is empty okay, and G 1 G 2 are open. with G 1 intersection S is non empty and G 2 intersection S is non empty. Okay. Uh, if you can never write S to be contained in such a union, okay, then uh, S is connected. Okay. So, uh, what that means is uh, I know that sounds like a, a bunch of conditions. Okay. So, what you want to avoid is that is the, is the following. So, for example, uh, you look at the following uh, intuitive example. Okay. So, suppose you have the uh, unit disk okay, and you have uh, yet another uh, you know set like that there. Okay. So, what you can do in the complex plane is you can come up with one open uh, set which contains that piece and yet another open set which contains this piece and so you can separate these two blobs here okay and uh, we exactly want to avoid this situation here so this this set which is the union of the unit disk and this piece here okay is uh, we want to call that disconnected okay so a connected is the opposite okay you can never write this s to be contained in g1 union g2 okay where g1 and g2 are disjoint open sets like that we want them to be non empty as well okay and then uh, they are open sets okay and they should have some non trivial intersection uh, uh, with s that is also important okay so that's the definition in terms of uh, open sets okay so um, we will not consider here all the uh, intricacies of this definition here because uh, what we are going to see uh, are mostly open connected sets okay which we will call as regions or domains okay so an open connected set okay subset of c is called a region or a domain okay i'll interchangeably use uh, these words sometimes I will call uh, open connected subsets of C as domains and sometimes uh, I am going to call them regions. Okay. They both refer to uh, open connected subsets of C okay. and we will see that with that additional uh, condition open okay, these connected sets uh, behave in a better fashion. Okay. So, uh, we can sort of use uh, the property of open connected sets and do away with this definition itself. Okay, but I am giving this definition for completeness. Let G be a non empty open subset of C okay. uh, then G is a region which means it is an open connected subset of C okay, if and only if any two points of G okay, can be connected by a, a polygonal path. So, a polygonal path is a 
finite union of straight line segments in the complex plane. Okay. So, that is a polygonal path and if you take any two points in an open connected set, okay, uh, we will show that they can be joined by a polygonal path. Okay. And if an open set is such that uh, you can join any two points by a polygonal path, okay, then uh, that, uh, uh, that open set will be connected. Okay. So, it has to be connected. Okay. So, uh, proof uh, once again here uh, we will use this property okay, uh, and we will use the uh, property in the direction that if we have an open connected set, then any two points can uh, uh, be connected by a polygonal path. Okay. That is the direction we will frequently use this property in. Okay. So, I will prove only that direction and, uh, and skip the uh, proof of the converse. Uh, although this is an if and only if statement. Okay. So, I will prove um, one direction that if G is a region, then any two points can be joined by a polygonal path. Okay. So, uh, suppose G is a region. Okay. So, um, uh, fix a point A belongs to uh, G. Okay. So, uh, G is non-empty. Okay. So, A belongs to G okay. and uh, A 1 okay, or let G 1 be the set of all points in G such that uh, there is a polygonal path. Okay, from A to Z, which is completely contained in G. If you have some set like that, a polygonal path is a path like that. So, let G 2 be the complement of G 1 in G. Okay. So, we are going to show that G 1 and G 2, the complement of uh, G 1 in G, okay, both of them are open sets. Okay. So, by the definition of connectedness, okay. so if you write, okay, so another uh, implication of this definition or another way to say this definition is that if you are able to express S okay, uh, with all these conditions, okay, if you are able to express S contained in G 1 union G 2 where and G 1 G 2 open, non empty or open and non empty. Okay, uh, then, then either G 1 is uh, okay, either G 1 intersection S is empty, then either this is empty or G 1 intersection G 2 intersection S is empty. Okay, what that means is uh, S is completely contained in either G 1 or G 2. If you are able to write a connected set. Okay, so, if S is connected and you are able to write it uh, to be contained in G 1 union G 2, where uh, G 1 and G 2 satisfy all these conditions, okay, then uh, one of this uh, has to be empty. Okay, it is the same, it is the same thing as saying all this. So, a connected set when if we show that G 1 and G 2 are, uh, are open, okay, then G 1 union G 2 okay, is uh, G Okay, which implies that and G is connected, G is a region. Okay. So, this will imply that either G 1 is empty or G 2 is empty, that is the strategy. So, we want to show that uh, either G 1 is empty or G 2 is empty. Okay. So, this is a standard way of using connectedness. Okay. So, normally uh, we will encounter proofs where uh, we will use the uh, property of a region okay, um, that it is connected and we will use it in the following fashion. Uh, we will uh, split it into two open sets and, uh, and then uh, which are disjoint okay. and since the set is connected given set is connected, it has to be that one of these open sets is empty. Okay. So, we might encounter such proofs in this uh, course. Okay. So, here is uh, one such. So, here is G 1, G 1 is set of all points in G, which are polygonally connected to A. So, we are able to make way from A to Z okay, uh, in the region G, we are able to connect A to Z. 
Okay. And so, uh, what we miss out is all those points in G, uh, which cannot be connected uh, from A. Okay. So, uh, G 1 is open. Okay. So, if uh, suppose Z belongs to G 1, okay. then since G 1 is a subset of G. Okay. So, since G 1 is contained in G, okay, there is and G is open and G is open being an open set, uh, there is uh, an R positive such that uh, B Z R is contained in G. Okay. So, um, if Z is contained in G, there is a ball of radius R around Z, which is completely contained in G, because G is open set. Okay. So, now, uh, what happens is, uh, since Z belongs to G 1, since A, A and Z are um, connected by a polygonal path, okay, uh, we can extend this path to any point w belongs to b z r okay by uh, joining perhaps an additional line segment additional uh, segment containing okay uh, or additional segment joining uh, z and w z and w well okay so if you have this ball of radius r let me draw a bigger picture okay and w is any point here okay so there is a path from well i should say polygonal path okay so there is a path from a to this z here Okay, Z is the center of this ball. Okay, by joining one additional piece like that, okay, we are not disturbing the finiteness because we are we have added one more segment. Okay, and uh, this this joining of this additional Z to W, uh, we still have a polygonal path starting from A, ending at W. Okay, and notice that if this path is completely in G, okay, then so is this path because this open set. So, is uh, this new path which is obtained by the join because this uh, whole set is uh, opens uh, sorry ball is contained in G. Okay. So, this uh, this additional line segment is also contained in G. So, the pa path joining A and W okay, is also contained in uh, G. Okay. So, uh, so, W belongs to B Z R Okay, uh, is such that W belongs to uh, G 1, because now A and W can also be polygonally connected uh, via a path which is completely contained in G. Okay. So, uh, uh, in conclusion this is an arbitrary point in B Z R. So, B Z R is completely contained in G 1. So, G is open which implies or rather G 1 is open. Okay. Likewise, uh, the same applies to G 2. Okay. So, likewise, I will just say likewise uh, G 2 is open. Okay. It is the complement uh, and if you are unable to connect A and anything in the complement via polygonal path, okay, the path joining uh, Z and W, okay, where W is a point in a ball around Z. Okay, uh, okay, uh, that also uh, will not be contained in G. Okay, so uh, so you cannot polygonally connect uh, any point in the neighborhood of Z. Okay, and so uh, G two will also be open. Okay, and uh, now, okay, or said otherwise, if you have a point uh, in a neighborhood of Z. Okay, which can be polygonally connected to A, okay, then you can extend it by a segment to join Z as well uh, to A polygonally. Okay. So, what that does is it puts Z uh, 
okay, in G 1, okay, but uh, by assumption it belongs to G 2. So, that is why G 2 has to be open. Okay, so, G 2 is open. Uh, so, um, G 1 okay, G 1 inter or union G 2 is uh, all of G, G 1 G 2 open okay, and uh, G 1 intersection G 2 is empty, which implies uh, either G 1 is empty or G 2 is empty. Okay, which is what we want if if one of them is empty uh, then you would have shown well uh, g 1 is non empty we know that we know uh, g 1 is non empty. So, so g 2 is empty. Okay. So, every point what it tells is that i e uh, g 1 is equal to g. So, every point in all of g can be polygonally connected to this fixed point A. Okay. So, uh, that completes the first portion of the proof. Uh, well, I am going to skip the other direction like I mentioned. Okay. So, that is the proof of this uh, proposition okay. and it is this property of open connected sets that we uh, keep on revisiting. Okay. So, uh, we will use the fact that any two points in an open connected set can be uh, joined using a polygonal path which is completely connect uh, contained in the open connected set. Okay. So, um, uh, for technical reasons uh, uh, I am sorry I will go back to this definition of a region. Okay. I will call uh, an open connected non empty subset. I will always take a non empty subset of C and that is what I will call as a region or a domain. Okay. So, please note that uh, that is that has to be a non empty subset of C for it to be called a region or domain um, by convention an empty set is connected. Okay. Uh, so, I insist that it be non empty. Next uh, we will look at uh, sequences okay, of complex numbers. Okay. So, a sequence of complex numbers is is an ordered list uh, of complex numbers such that uh, corresponding to each natural number n okay there is a okay an nth complex number number in the list we will call it a subscript n. Okay. And so, uh, since the viewer uh, I am assuming is familiar with sequences of real numbers. Okay. So, sequences of complex numbers are similar. Okay. So, it is it is a list uh, where there is a starting uh, starting complex number, the first complex number, the second complex number etcetera. Okay. So, there is a starting point and then uh, you have a list. Okay. And then um, uh, uh, this is denoted by denoted variously by a n and sometimes even by a n n equals 1 through infinity. Okay. So, there are uh, different kinds of uh, notation okay. and um, an example well a quick example um, a n okay, such that I will define the nth term. Okay, the nth term is defined by 13 plus 1 by n times i. Okay, so I have given a formula in terms of n, where n is a natural number. Okay, so that's an example of a, a complex sequence. 
okay and then you could also define uh, sequences recursively like the uh, fibonacci sequence in case of uh, real numbers okay um, so you could also have recursive definitions okay uh, like this a not is 1 a 1 is defined as 1 and uh, a n is defined as a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 plus perhaps uh, imaginary part is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2, 2 times a n minus 2 something like this. Okay. So, this is a recursive definition uh, of a sequence. Okay. So, it is uh, it helps you build the sequence. Okay. So, uh, so, these are sequences of complex numbers and we can talk of uh, their convergence okay, in the top in the topology of the complex plane. Okay. So, uh, we say so their convergence sequences can converge a sequence a n is said to have a limit l a complex number l. Okay. So, if given epsilon greater than 0, okay, uh, there is there is a corresponding corresponding n not belongs to n okay such that for each n greater than or equal to n not the modulus of a n the nth term minus l is strictly less than epsilon uh, okay for each n greater than or equal to n not okay so what that means is that a complex number l is said to be the limit of uh, a sequence a n if for any given epsilon. So, that epsilon is uh, provided. Okay. So, if for any epsilon like that positive given, okay, you consider the ball of radius epsilon around l okay, and then uh, all the all the a n's for n greater than or equal to certain n naught depending upon epsilon. Okay. So, all these a n s will now be inside this ball. Okay. So, after a certain stage n naught stage as in uh, you think of uh, this ordered list uh, somewhere down the list starting from some point all the numbers down in the list will be contained in this ball. Okay. So, that, that is when you say that uh, uh, that is the meaning of modulus of a n minus l is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. Then you say that uh, and if this this behavior is exhibited for every epsilon okay you can find a corresponding n naught then you say that this sequence converges to the limit l okay and um, a sequence is said to be convergent if it has a limit Okay, and is said not to converge or is said to be uh, not convergent okay, is said not to converge okay, is said to be not convergent okay, if um, it has no limit. It is said to diverge if the modulus increases arbitrarily. Okay. So, a sequence is said to diverge, a complex sequence of course, okay, is said to uh, diverge if given any large positive number, okay, uh, there is an n naught belongs to n. 
okay such that uh, for each n greater than or equal to n naught okay the modulus of a n is uh, quite large it's greater than the provided m okay so you give these uh, circles uh, you, you imagine these circles centered at the origin okay and then uh, large circles okay so uh, if if there is an n naught corresponding to each of these circles such that uh, modulus of an is larger than the radius of the circle okay uh, so which means these uh, ans all of them fall outside a circle of radius m okay uh, then uh, you say that this sequence diverges okay so if i give you an m and a circle of radius m around origin okay then uh, all your ans are outside uh, the circle of radius m and this behavior if it is exhibited for every uh, positive real number m okay uh, if you can bring a corresponding n naught then you say that the sequence uh, diverges okay so that, that that's about sequences converging and uh, diverging okay so um, it's similar to the notion of convergence and divergence of sequence of real real numbers okay and then there is a cauchy's criterion for convergence okay so a sequence uh, an okay is convergent in c okay uh, which means it has a limit uh, if and only if uh, given epsilon greater than 0 okay uh, there is an n not uh, belongs to n such that uh, for every m comma n greater than or greater than n not or greater than or equal to n not the modulus of a m minus a n is strictly less than epsilon Okay, so, that is similar to the uh, Cauchy's criterion uh, for uh, real sequences except here we consider the modulus of uh, the difference a m minus a n. Okay. And then uh, we have the uh, for compact sets we have the following Bolzano Weierstrass property. Okay. So, Bolzano Weierstrass theorem or a version of it actually. Okay. So, an infinite subset of a compact set has a limit point okay. it is interesting uh, okay. once again we see the appearance of the compact set here and um, this in general of course, is not true uh, if uh, if you do not consider a compact set. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. so this is uh, not true for example, if you consider the natural numbers infinite subset of the complex plane uh, that need not have a limit point. Okay. So, that is the Bolzano Weierstrass property which uh, we might use uh, okay, property of compact sets okay. and uh, with this uh, we will uh, conclude uh, the topology uh, or the study of the topology of the complex plane okay. uh, and uh, we will see that the topological properties of the complex plane uh, have a uh, uh, have an important role to play uh, in the study of analytic functions okay? and that theme we will see uh, all throughout the course.